Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law, where we talk about the law, the legal profession, law school, and their impact to society. In today's video, we will talk about your career options as a lawyer, especially for those who just passed the bar. I'm sure right now you're thinking, where do I want to work as a lawyer? So stay tuned. And also at the end, you will see my journey after taking the bar, while waiting for the bar results, and landing in my first job. So please don't forget to like and subscribe after watching the video. Enjoy! More than 50,000 living lawyers in the Philippines. Is that number too much? Or do we need more lawyers? Every year, between 1,000 to 2,000 new lawyers are admitted to the bar. So, you ask, where do we put all these lawyers? In fact, some would ask, do we still need lawyers, especially during these uncertain times? Well, the answer is still the same. We need lawyers because society needs justice. And lawyers help attain that justice. Whether justice is served, well, of course, is another thing. But then, justice cannot be served if there are no lawyers who bring forward the claims and causes of people. So, you have just passed the bar. And now you're thinking, where do I want to work? So, there are four areas of practice that a lawyer can engage in. So, you have uh, public interest law corporations, government, and of course, law firms and offices. But in public interest law, lawyers are expected to fight for the little people. It is in this area of practice where compensation is not the main priority. In fact, some lawyers who are engaged in public interest law do not see compensation even as a priority. So in public interest law, Lawyers are advocates and they take up various causes such as human rights, the rights of labor, the rights of uh, the homeless, indigent clients, and including the environment. Here a lawyer takes up a cause, he fights for it and he defends it. The client has no face here because the advocacy is the client itself. So what are the pros and benefits of practicing public interest law? Well first, the idealism. Here you can practice everything that is good and positive that you have learned in law school. Second, the altruism or the feeling of doing good for humanity. The feeling of being able to serve a cause greater than yourself. And at the end of the day, it's the satisfaction of the heart. Second are corporations. Unfortunately, corporate lawyers are unfairly perceived as serving only the business interests of capitalists because they help these capitalists earn profits. But that's not necessarily true. For a corporate lawyer, it's about corporate housekeeping and avoiding litigation. So what is corporate housekeeping? Any activity to make the corporation comply with laws, rules, and regulations and to put it in good business health is corporate housekeeping. Also, corporate lawyers help the corporation avoid litigation. So that's why they carefully prepare contracts, review these contracts, and help in enforcing these contracts. Now, should litigation be required, most corporate lawyers assist external counsels in prosecuting these cases. So what are the benefits of working for corporations? Well, corporate lawyers are offered and paid very attractive compensations. Well, the reason is obvious, because their pay is based intricately on the profits of the corporation. So the more money the corporation makes, the more money the lawyer makes. And also there's the predictable work schedule. I say predictable because corporate lawyers have a fixed schedule. It's either 8 to 5, 9 to 6, or it depends, it can also be flexible. But what is certain in corporate law practice is that you don't have to bring your work at home. And so because of that, the third benefit is having a personal life. If you are a working mother or working father, then you can be assured that you still have time for your family, help your kids with their assignments, and go on that weekend road trip. 
The third is government practice or what I'd like to call the public service practice. You see, the government is the biggest employer of lawyers. Most, if not all, government agencies have lawyers. And these lawyers are spread out in three different branches of government. You have lawyers in the judiciary as law clerks or researchers. You also have lawyers in the executive, such as the offices of the Solicitor General, uh, the Department of Justice, the Public Authorities Office, and what have you. And, of course, lawyers in the legislative department working as legal staff officers for senators and congressmen. So what are the pros and benefits of joining the government? Well, almost the same as joining the private sector and working for corporations. Lawyers in the government are paid quite attractively. Their compensation is provided for and protected by the salary standardization law. If that law is amended and the government decides to increase the pay of every government officer or employee, lawyers will also benefit that increase in pay. Now, just like private or corporate lawyers, government lawyers also have a predictable work schedule, maybe except for prosecutors and public defenders who have to work on weekends. But most lawyers in the government don't work on weekends, so that's something to consider. And also because of that, they have a personal life. And lastly, the potential for career growth. Lawyers in the government can aspire for higher positions. Lawyers in the judiciary can start as branch clerks of court in a lower court and with the right career moves, they can climb all the way to become a justice of the Supreme Court. That's how professionally satisfying work in the government is. Now the fourth area of practice is law firm, law office, or simply private practice. A private practitioner can experience both the good and the bad stuff. Now of course it's just a matter of perspective. It depends on the lawyer if he wants to make his cases and his work personal. So what does a private practitioner do? Well, he litigates. He goes to court, files cases, and represents clients. A litigator also does legal counseling and legal writing. So that's why a litigation or a private practitioner is the go-to person for legal advice, preparation of documents such as contracts and deeds. So what are the pros and benefits of private practice? Well, number one, experience and training. It cannot be gainsaid that lawyers in the private practice will encounter a lot of legal problems. You know, most of these legal problems are in fact exact opposites. So you have criminal law, civil law, and then suddenly you have commercial law. So you become a problem solver if you are a private practitioner. The second pro is the potential for good income or compensation. Just like practice in corporate law, the income or the pay of a private practitioner depends intricately on the success or performance of the law firm. So the third pro is network. Lawyers in the private practice do not just deal with clients, they also deal with third persons with whom these clients have transactions with. So the circle of friends of a private practitioner is quite wide compared to lawyers in the government, the private or in the public interest practice. So those are the areas of practice that you can consider as new lawyers. Do you want to work in the government? Do you want to work as a corporate lawyer? Do you want to you know, feed that hungry and thirsty heart by entering the public interest law practice? Or do you want to gain experience or training by becoming a private practitioner, either as a solo practitioner or by joining a law firm or a law office? The decision is really yours. Now, for those who are already in the practice for several years, you can still move from one area of practice to another. As the joke goes, a lawyer never retires. So, you must be wondering, how did I do it? What was my first job and what career path did I choose? Well, first, we have to go back to 17 years ago, and the year is 2003. I have just graduated from law school. This is from my yearbook from Silliman University, and the year was 2003. That year, I took the bar exams and I had to wait several months for the results to be released the following year, 2004. And so while waiting for the bar, I decided to look for work in Metro Manila. And I had to stay at a boarding house in Leon Ginto in Malate, Manila. So this was my dormitory while I was staying with my brother back then. And you see, 
you can be foolish when you're in your dormitory. Okay, so I found work. Late 2003, I found work at the office of Senator Aquilino Nene Pimentel at the Senate of the Philippines. And uh, fortunately, it was the election season and uh, I had the most wonderful experience of joining his campaign. So I headed the political affairs office and so I was engaged in campaigns, mostly in Metro Manila. And one of my job was to go to campaign sorties and to stand in for him before, before his arrival, before the arrival of the candidates. So if you can look closely, there I am, sorry, there I am, okay, talking. I can't remember what I said, but then definitely I was uh, promoting and uh, campaigning for his platform. And I miss the group. Actually, this is the group. This is my youth group. So they came from different universities. I don't know if you're familiar, but there you see me, okay? With all the youth. Okay, now, I also went around to campaign for him. All right, now, of course, I'm showing this not because there is much to see. Because when you look at this picture, unmistakably you can see those pants and right now I won't be caught dead wearing those pants okay so the results were released sometime in March or maybe early April and so I, I found out that I passed and um, several weeks later I signed my oath uh, sorry I signed the role of attorneys so this is the classic picture of all lawyers if you have a picture with these two uh, these two you know then definitely you are a lawyer okay so shout out to my brother okay who joined me during the signing all right now my first job was in a firm I uh, look for possible employers in the internet and I found Kankaiko Balasbas and associates so this is one of my early pictures at the office this is the reception area of the office and that's grace or venus our secretary back then but now she's the accounting officer so this is where i worked as a lawyer Kankaiko Balasbas and associates my uh, former bosses were the retired justice emilio Kankaiko, attorney ambo Kankaiko, and attorney fortune uh, balas bas and it was a you know uh, meaningful and memorable years i stayed with the law office for two years okay so picture with the staff more pictures with the staff and of course it was not all work because there were also occasions where we went on travel as a firm and this was my first travel to boracay okay so, I started in the law office and I owe much of my earlier training to the law office. So I learned to practice my procedure, I learned to, uh, of course, use my knowledge in substantive law. Of course, the early months were not easy. As a new lawyer, you felt you knew very little. You felt that law school, the bar review, and even the bar exams did not prepare you enough for the reality. I had my share of blunders, a lot of them actually, but you know, we learn from experience. So my first blunder or blooper was when I attended my first pre-trial conference and this was maybe three months after being hired by the law office. And so I didn't know what to do. So what I did was read my rules of court, read my textbook and read the case file. So I prepared a scenario in my head about what was going to happen. So the next day I went to the court early and uh, I waited for the case to be called. I was lawyer for the private complainant, so I was the private prosecutor. So we proceeded with the pre-trial conference. And when it was my turn to talk, I gave the court a background of the case, discussing the facts and the elements of the crime. 
And the court said, What are you doing? And I said, Your Honor, I'm conducting pre-trial. And he said, You are wasting my time, fiscal. Okay? Train him. Fiscal, tell him what to do. And I had no idea that a pre-trial conference is as easy as stipulating facts, okay? stipulating the jurisdiction of the court, giving the names of your witnesses, marking of documents, and then permission to leave your honor. That was how easy or that was how short it was supposed to be. But because I studied the book and I played out a scenario in my head that it would be a very thorough and extensive process and so there I was. I wasted the time of the court. So it was um, a good baptismal of fire. It was really a reality check, reality versus expectation. Another blooper or blunder was when I appeared in place of a supervising partner of the firm because he couldn't make it. So I had no idea what the case was about. So I was just told to go to court and ask for a resetting or postponement. And so I went there. I had all I had was the case number and case title. And then, so, I went inside after finding out that it was in fact the court where the case was filed. And so I waited for our case to be called. And when it was called, of course, I made my respectful appearance for and on behalf of my supervising partner. But then I was asked for a compliance, which I had no idea about. And so, I tried to make excuses. Of course, I had an excuse, which was that the handling lawyer was not available. But the court did not want to have any of it. And that's why the judge asked the other parties about their pleasure, which was a shock to me. I mean, what pleasure are we talking about? <laughs> and so, there I learned that, you know, when a judge asks a lawyer, what is your pleasure? It means, do you have anything to say, do you have an objection, or do you have any manifestation? And luckily because I looked so young back then, and uh, the lawyers knew that I was a young lawyer, and so they did not object to the postponement of the case. And, you know, that kind of stuck with me because, um, you know, in practice, especially in litigation, compassion really goes a long way. You know, you must be kind especially to new lawyers as the older lawyers were in my case you know, several years ago. So those were my bloopers at the law office and there would be more bloopers along the way not just in the law office but in the other offices that I worked in. After my two years stint at the law office I moved to the Court of Appeals and then after the Court of Appeals the GSIS and then I became a corporate lawyer and then went back to private practice and on the side of course I teach in law schools in bar review and in MCLE so that was the career path that I took and every work every company or agency that I worked with I took a lot from it I am not talking about the money I'm talking about the experience and the valuable knowledge so this is my advice to you know what you want now while it's early, do you want to be better at substantive law and procedure so that you know what to do for every case that is thrown at you? Then join a law office or a firm. Now, if you want to be better at research and writing skills, then join the government such as the judiciary. Now, if you want to be part of a team working towards a common objective such as earning profits, then join the corporate world. Now, lastly, if you want to serve society, if you want to make a positive difference without considering money or fame, then join the public interest sector. So those are your options. Now, start early, start strong, because in the long run, you will just get better. I hope you have learned something valuable today. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.